Good morning and assalamu alaikum everyone. This is your science teacher and I welcome you all to an exciting year of grade 5. I want you all to open your new Oxford primary science books and turn to page 2. Well, this is our unit number 1, Building Units of the Body. Today, we all will be discussing about the building units of our body. We will be finding out what our body is made up of. Well, as we all know that a house is made up of bricks. Bricks are the smallest component of any building, be it a small house or a high-rise building. In the same way, our body is made up of tiny cells. They are the building blocks of our body. They make up all the living things and perform all the activities needed to keep living things alive. Now, a group of cells that are alike and work together to perform one specific function are known as tissues. Now, as we all know that there are numerous organisms on our planet Earth, some of them comprises of only one cell and are known as unicellular organisms. The example for such organisms is given here as you can see in this picture, amoeba. Amoeba is a unicellular organism that, is organism that lives in water and wet soil. Now these microscopic organisms can only be seen through a microscope. On the other hand, human beings, animals and plants are made up of billions and billions of cells and are known as multicellular organisms. Now let's move on to our next page that is the structure of the cell. Now over here as you can see on page 3. We have a, an animal cell structure. Over here you can see that its outer covering is highlighted here. This outer covering or the outer membrane is called cell membrane. Now this purple rounded structures are the nucleus. Over here the yellow structures that I'm pointing towards are the cytoplasm and the vacuoles. Now moving towards the cell membrane. The cell membrane is a part of the cell which is common to plants and animals that is that is found both in animals and the plants. The cell membrane is the outer covering of the cell as you can see in this picture. It works like your school gatekeeper. It allows only certain materials to move in and out of the cell. It also gives the cell its shape. Moving on towards the nucleus. As you can see here, it is the control center of the cell. All the activities of the cell are controlled by the nucleus. Now the cytoplasm is a jelly-like structure that fills the cell and is enclosed by the cell membrane. All the organelles of the cell are suspended or floating in it. Now, Another imp very important structure of the cell is, are the vacuoles, right? These are the little bubble-like structures found in the cells. Now basically, they are the storage sections of the cell. Over here, all the food, water and waste substances are stored. And then they are being, uh, if, if it's a waste material, then they are being thrown out of the cell through the membrane. And if uh, the w food comes outside the cell, these vacuoles basically absorbs all the food material and provides energy to the cell. Now let's move on to a page 4. Over here they have actually defined how the plant cell is different from the animal cell. Now this structure over here is basically of a plant cell. What exactly or what difference you guys uh, see here as compared to the animal cell? Well we'll talk about it. Since plants are different from animals in many ways, so their cells are also different from animal cells in some ways. Over here, as you can see, 
in the previous picture we saw there was a cell membrane over here also we have a cell membrane but outside the cell membrane as you can see there is a cell wall now this cell wall is the outermost covering of a plant cell it is basically made up of a cell of cellulose which is a very tough material and it actually provides sub and uh, support and the pro and it protects the cell now after the cell wall we have the cell membrane cell membrane as you all know uh, the function of the cell membrane uh, what the function of cell membrane is now moving on uh, towards the vacuoles that we have plant cells have one large vacuole they don't have so many vacuoles they only have the only difference uh, between an animal cell and a plant cell is that in animal cell we had uh, if uh, like i'll show you in animal cell we had small vacuoles as you can see here whereas in the plant cell we have a large vacuole as you can see in this picture again the vacuoles plant cells have large vacuoles found in the center of the cell it is so big in the plant cell that it occupies a large space and pushes the nucleus at one side as you can see the nucleus is being pushed at one side right the function of the nucleus again is the same uh, just like the animal cell like it controls the activities of the cell apart from that the main thing that is uh, one more thing that is being found in the plant cell are the chloroplast the chloroplast is the organelle that is found only in plant cell it contains green pigment called chlorophyll which absorbs the sun's energy and helps the plant to make its food so these are the basic differences between an animal cell and the plant cell now moving on to the last topic that is over here they have provided us a small information of how long does a cell live now every cell has a different life span taste bud cells live for about 7 days red blood cells live for about 4 months nerve cells live for 18 to 130 years so with this i would like to end up my lecture here uh, the assignments related to this chapter will be provided in the uh, uh, along with this video into the your group so thank you all for listening to me so intently take care